with you boys, man. It's your boy Kim Sun TV, man. You know I'm back with another banger. Yes, sir, ski. But look, like, subscribe, turn on push notifications. I'm dropping a new video for you boys every week. Every week I'm coming with a banger. DMV just passed a new thing, or California, wherever it is. But there's a new law now, so there's a new pre-trip inspection. And honestly, with this new pre-trip inspection, it's so much easier. Like, if you fail to pre-trip now, it's it's uh, uh, you you just not taking it serious because they give you a checklist and all. So it's like you don't even got to remember all the names and parts and just. You know, you, you got the checklist, so there's no way that you can almost fail. Like, you just go on the checklist, look, boom, I check that off. Okay, mm, check this off. Explain about that. Explain about that. And this whole video, I'm going to walk y'all through the whole entire thing. I'm going to show y'all the checklist that you're going to be using at DMV to pass your pre-trip, air brake, everything. But with the air brake test, if you mess up or fail on the air brake test, it is an automatic fail. The test is over. Send him home. Pack him up. It's over with, Jack. Time to start over. Get it together. You hear me? But look, I'm about to walk you boys step by step how to pass y'all pre-trip inspection. First thing first, I'm going to walk y'all through the air brake test. Air brake test you have to have on point. If you fail the air brake test, the test is automatically over. Failure. Test is over. You have to come back and redo it. So, the first thing you're doing, you're going to be doing your governor cutout test. You tell the examiner, I will release my tractor and trailer parking brakes with the engine turned on. Tractor, trailer brakes. You will push those in. Reduce the air pressure to 95 PSI or low enough for the needle to set. And you're always watching your primary gauge. You say the governor will cut out. Well, with the new test, the governor will cut out in between... 120 PS, 120 PSI and 140 PSI. And you say, you press the accelerator, you can press the accelerator a little bit as well just to make it go a little faster because as this air brakes and the pressure is building up, sometimes it goes a little slow. So you can give the, give it a little gas. You give the results and you say, my governor cut out at, let's just say 123 PSI because, and you, the reason that you know that is because your needle will stop. Your primary gauge needle will stop. And you will see it and you tell them it cut off at 123 PSI. Then from there, you're doing your applied leak test. You will turn the engine off, point to the parking brakes. You say, with the engine off and brakes release, I will press and hold the service brake for one minute. I will lose no more than three PSI in a single vehicle and no more than four PSI for a combination vehicle. Press and hold the service brake this is the service brake. Press and hurt the service brake for 60 seconds. You can use your phone or watch, but no counting. Say my needle settled at, and what they mean by that, because once you apply your foot all the way down to the brake, you will lose a little bit of air pressure. So let's just say your needle settled at 100 PSI. You let them know my needle settled at 100 PSI. Hold it for one minute, and then you let them know how much air pressure you lost if you lost you should lose no, we're in a combination vehicle, so you should lose no more than four PSI. If you lost zero, tell them zero. If you lost one, tell them one. Then from there, we will do our low air warning test. You will turn the electricity on. You say low air warning indicator should come on no lower than 55 PSI, looking at your primary gauge. Slowly press the service brake. Give the results. My low air warning light came on at Let's just say 60 PSI. That was a safe test. Then from there, you'll be doing your spring brake test. Slowly, and your spring brakes should apply between 20 and 45 PSI. So you will slowly fan the surface brake. Trailer brake popped out. If your trailer brake pops out first, or tractor, whichever one pops out first, or if they both pop out at the same time. Let them know. My trailer and tractor brake both popped out at 30 PSI. That was a safe test. Then you will do a safe start. You will start the vehicle. Make sure your parking brakes are set. Make sure your gear is in neutral. This is an automatic, so there's the gear. Make sure the gear is in neutral. Lightly press the accelerator and check for any stickiness. Then from there, 
you will put your you will put the car into gear and you will you will do your tug test you will release one brake tractor or trailer whichever one you decide to do first release one brake as the car is trying to roll you will feel a tug that's how you know your tractor brake is properly working release that one and then do the exact same thing for your trailer brake then you will do your service brake test let go we'll push in both of your brakes tractor and trailer and you will go slow for about five miles per hour and you will push your service brake and then let them know my service brake is properly working and then that's your air brake that is your air brake and tug test ski all right look bam now we get to our end cab inspection it's so hot bro makes no sense but basically so we we'll talk about our fire extinguisher. Our fire extinguisher is properly rated and charged, up to date and secure. Three-way three-way um, reflector triangles, secure, not broken. Our spare bulbs and fuses, they're secure. Our seat belt, secure to the vehicle, not broken, not torn, and locks properly, clean, and is in um, and is secure to the vehicle. Then you speak of your um, your side and hood mirrors. Let them know that your side and hood mirrors are not broken. They're clean and they are adjusted to your view. Now we get to our air horn. Bop, pull the horn. You know the big trucker horn that everybody pull. Mm -mm. Windshield. You know what the windshield is. Clean, secure, not broken or cracked. No illegal stickers. Dashboard is clean. No loose, and there's no loose materials up there. Your voltmeter. Well, now we don't have to speak of the meters no more. But you have to speak of your the old test. You will speak of your voltmeter, oil gauge, temperature gauge, air gauge, and uh, ABS indicator. I still think you um. Still, still, when you, as soon as you start the car, just speak of your ABS light, um, your ABS indicator light. Let them know that it came on and turned off, that it's properly working. Your lights, all your lights, um, high beams, low beams, headlights, left signal, right turn signal, and your four-way flashers. Let them know that they're, um, they're working properly. Steering wheel has no more than 10% of play on a 20-inch wheel. No stickiness or damage. Your street horn, properly working. Just hit the street horn. Bop. Your uh, wipers and washers. Let them know that they're secure. They're not damaged. They work smoothly. Turn them on and turn on your washer fluid. You know how you clean the windows. You turn that on. Heater and defroster. Turn that on. Let them know that, that your heater and defroster is properly working. If you're in a manual car, speak of your gear shift. Let them know your gear shift is um, it's secure not broken the boot is not torn and it's properly sealed selector not broken then let them know your floor is clean there's no debris nothing that can get under your pedal to stop you say if something got under your pedal as you're trying to accelerate you can't go all the way down something got in your brake as you're trying to hit the service brake gotta be bad another thing my boy always when you're getting in and out of your vehicle make sure you have three points of contact if you get out this vehicle without no three points of contact, your test is an automatic fail. So please be on point with that. And the, what they mean by three points of contact, one foot on the stairs, your hand is on something, your other hand is grabbing the other thing. One, two, three. I don't have nobody filming me, so I gotta do this on my own. Grab your hand there, then from once your hand's there, move your hand, grab the steering wheel, get inside. The same way that you get in, get out that same exact way. Your back is always facing when you get out. Never jump in and out this. Never jump out the truck face forward. Gotta prop my phone up, man. Okay. So from here, we're going with our checklist. You're speaking your ID clearance light. Tell them that there's proper color, amber, clean, not broke, not missing any bolts, and it's properly secured to my vehicle. Mirror, copy secure to my vehicle. Not broken, not damaged, not bent. Not missing any bolts and screws. It is clean and it is properly adjusted to my view. You will also talk about your lenses, your headlights, both right and left. High beam, low beam, turn signals, and four way flashes. Our four way flashes and turn signals are proper color, amber, clean. Not broke, it's properly secured to the vehicle. High beams and low beams are properly secured to my vehicle. Not broke, not damaged, and they are clean. Front of your truck. Get to the front of the truck. You tell them there's no roots, no puddles, or nothing hanging. 
and also it's not tilted, not leaning. And with it being tilted or leaning, that could be three things. One, you can have a suspension problem. Two, low air pressure in your tires. Or three, an uneven load. You do not want an uneven load inside your trailer. Make sure your trailer is balanced correctly, please. Safety first, guys. Safety first. Then from there, you will speak of your fluids. You're telling about your, your oil. Tell them about your coolant, your power steering, and your washer fluid. Let them know that your fluids are at proper level, above the minimum line, below the max. Your oil is at proper level and safe at, and is at safe operating range. Every, all my fluids are properly secured to the vehicle. No leaks, no cracks, not missing any bolts. Then you will speak of your tires. Your front tires has 110 PSI, and you check that with the air gauge. No less than 432 seconds of tire depth, and you check that with a tire depth gauge. No abrasions, no cuts, no bubbles. No re-threads, no recaps on my front tires. My front tires are the same size, same type, and they are evenly worn. My tires are safely connected and properly connected to my rim. My rim is properly connected to my tire. No illegal welds, no excessive rust trails, no holes, no dents. My lug nuts are all present, properly secured to the vehicle, no rust trails, and no distorted bolt holes. And distorted bolt holes, I said if you screw this in too tight, the mechanic screws it in too tight with a power drill. That'll make a bolt hole go through there. Your hub oil seal is properly secure, it's properly full, it's not leaking. Your valve cap stem is not leaking, not broken, the cap is properly on there. The spring mount, you're speaking of your spring mounts. Let me guys show you what these spring mounts look like. Let's see. And some stuff I'm a little skimming through and you know, but if there's any questions, just drop a question down below and I will answer any question that you guys need to know. This is your spring, this is your whole spring system. But these are your spring mounts. You let them know they're not broke, properly secured to the vehicle, not missing any bolts, has no loose bolts, no excessive rust. This is your leaf spring. Let them know your leaf spring is properly secured to the vehicle, no excessive rust, there's no scissoring no shifting these are your u-bolts and you can tell these are you it looks just like a u you have two u-bolts and the screws are at the bottom they're properly secured to the vehicle not broke not damaged not missing any bolts shock absorber my shock absorber is properly secured to the vehicle it's not leaking not damaged not bent and then your shackles which is back here properly secured to the vehicle not broke not damaged not missing any bolts that's your spring system from there, you will go to your brakes. This is your brake chamber. Tell them your brake chamber is properly secured to the vehicle. It's not broke, not damaged, not cracked, not missing any bolts. Your brake holes, properly secured to the vehicle, not leaking, not damaged, not cracked. Connected on both ends. Also, your brake chamber is not missing its brake clamp. And this is the clamp that secures it. From there, you'll go to your push rod. My push rod has no more than one inch of play when I pull on it by hand. Properly secured to the vehicle, not missing any bolts. Your slack adjusters is properly secured to the vehicle at a 90 degree angle. No illegal wells, not missing any bolts. From here, just like a regular car, you have your brake drum, brake pad, sorry about that. Brake pad, properly secured to the vehicle, has no, no less than one fourth material. And from here, this is your brake drum. On a regular car, you know, these are rotors. Your brake drum is properly secured to the vehicle. No oil, no grease. Same thing with the brake pass. Sorry about that. Mention that there's no oil or grease. Properly secured to the vehicle, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going all the way through with the exact full, full, full words, but if you need to know, let me know. Um, What else? I got, I spoke of my tires already on the other side. Lenses on the side is the same thing as I did the front lenses. My ID clearance lights, but this is your 
This is a multi-purpose light. This is your four-way flasher turn signal. Let them know it's properly secured to the vehicle, amber in color, not missing any bolts. Your battery, you have to speak of the battery now. So at first the battery wasn't in the pre-trip inspection, but now they added the battery. And on this truck, you can't see the battery. The battery is under here. You just let them know that my battery is properly secured to the vehicle. No exposed wires, no battery assets. Everything is safely attached. Fuel tank and depth tank. If this, this truck doesn't have a depth tank, but if it did have a depth tank, it would be usually somewhere next to it. And you will explain your depth tank the same way that you explain your fuel tank. Let them know your fuel tank is probably secure to the vehicle. No dents, no cracks, not leaking. And the latches are properly, no wears, no tears, not missing any bolts or missing any screws. My cap is safely on. My safety chain is on. Stairs. You don't even have to speak of the stairs no more, which is a good thing. You don't have to speak of the catwalk no more, which is a good thing. Then you'll speak of your frame. No illegal welds, not missing his cross member. No illegal, um, no illegal welds, no illegal holes except for the factory holes. Um, what else we got for y'all? Air, these are your airlines. Airlines, there's two. There's usually going to be red and blue. But if they're not red and blue, always look and see. See how this has an E? And that has an S that lets you know this is your emergency airline and this is your service airline. So if there's not red and blue, always look for that E and that S. Both sides let you know. And these are the glad hands and make sure your rubber gas because your glass hands are not missing, not worn or torn. This is your electrical line. This green one connects from the trailer and the tractor. Your airlines do the same thing as well. Let them know that this properly secured to your trailer, your trailer and tractor. It's not leaking, not holes. Um, they're not tangled and they're not rubbing against your catwalk. You never want these things rubbing against the catwalk. Don't mind this here. This school is a kind of, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Let them know your electrical line has no splices. Properly secured to the vehicle and your safety latches are on on both sides. Connected. Okay, fifth wheel. Skip us over there. From here, we will speak of our apron and our skid plate. Let them know your apron and skid plate is properly secure. You can't see no daylight. Your skid plate is properly lubricated. Your apron has no illegal holes, welds, except for the factory ones. Well, that's not illegal because that's what they, you know what I mean? Then you'll go come under here. And here we have our kingpin and our locking jaw. You will let them know that your lock and jaw is secured around your kingpin. Your kingpin is not broke, damaged, or bent. Um, and then from there, on the new test, that's what I'm saying. This new test is so crazy. They had me remember this whole entire truck in school. Now that I'm looking at it, and the stuff that we don't have to explain is just crazy. Your DOT tape, reflector tape, explains to them. Your landing gear your landing handle, your frame, your legs, and sand pads. Can you explain to them that? Lenses and reflectors again, and that's all that they need you to know. Simple.